Hey guys, it's Lucky here, and today we're going to go over the things I wish I knew sooner when playing Baldur's Gate 3. These items are going to save you a ton of time, or a ton of currency, or a ton of frustration. These are just really nice, handy things to know that are really easy to miss when you're playing the game. So let's dive right in. The first one is that when you're looking around, when you're free roaming with the camera, one of the things you can do is just hold down your left mouse click, and it takes you right to your character. Another thing you can do while holding down on your mouse click is control your character. The camera will follow your character while you move your character. You don't have to keep clicking. You don't have to keep adjusting your camera to keep up. It just does it automatically. The next item on the list has to do with treasure that's buried underground. Now you've probably realized that you can find a shovel in this game and occasionally your group will find mounds of dirt that if you use the shovel on it to dig, you can dig up the treasure that's buried within. However, did you know that you don't even need to pass that perception check? Let's say you fail the perception check you see the check go off but nothing shows up you can manually start digging in this area you can just click on the shovel and click start digging and you can tell it where you want to dig and you can dig the treasure out of the ground without even passing the perception check another one has to do with talking to npcs and other people and that is that just because you have multiple dialogue options doesn't mean the game's going to let you use them all so definitely prioritize the ones that are really important to you or important to your character or important to the rp that you want to play out between the characters that are talking. Why does Will look so short here? <laughs> You want to prioritize the important items because a lot of times you'll do one or two dialogue options and one of them will trigger the end of the conversation and there's no way to go back into it after you've done that particular dialogue option, right? It just ends the conversation. So just kind of be aware that there's going to be a lot of conversation enders in these options and you're not always going to know which ones they are. So, you know, start with the things that are important to you. Now, while we are talking about a fantastic game, at some point you might be looking for a change of speed. That's where War Thunder comes in. War Thunder is an epic free-to-play multiplayer game about clashes between ground vehicles, air vehicles, and naval vessels. It's available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mac, and it's the sponsor of today's video. You can choose from an entire century of military vehicles to take into battle. Recently, a major update, La Royale, was released for War Thunder. This added a whole new French fleet led by battleship Paris, the legendary BTR-80, and Su-39, and a lot more. Visual effects have been significantly improved in this update for more realistic destruction of vehicles. Various pieces of the tanks fall off when damaged, naval vessels are spectacularly torn to pieces, and aircraft can be riddled with bullets in real time. War Thunder includes not only renowned vehicles, but also prototypes from the beginning of the 20th century through today. Each unit has its own look and feel in combat, allowing for unique experiences every time you play. War Thunder includes vehicles from 10 nations, USSR, USA, Germany, Great Britain, Japan, China, France, Italy, Sweden, and Israel. Within a single battle, players Players can choose to help their side take control of the ground in a tank or fight for control of the sky in an aircraft. In naval maps, players can choose from an assortment of large and small naval vessels. Every vehicle in War Thunder can be improved as you unlock additional devices, armor, and special equipment. You can also improve the crew of a vehicle to increase its stats. War Thunder features tons of customization, including camouflages and unique skins for your vehicles. War Thunder locations now span the entire globe, from Africa to Alaska. All the maps have been updated to make their visuals and and sounds as immersive as possible. The attention to detail is insane, and War Thunder is always adding new content, so it's always a good time to jump in. Download War Thunder for free from the link in the description. All new players and those who haven't entered War Thunder for six months or more will receive 100,000 silver lines, a week of renting legendary German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles as a gift forever, XP boosters, a week of premium account, and other bonuses. So hurry up and get all of these from my link in the description down below. The season of German gifts will end soon. The next one has to do with looting enemies, looting containers, looting treasure chests. If you click on an enemy and if you want to grab all of the loot, you can reach up and click take all, which is fairly easy, or you can just slap that space bar and it's going to grab everything from the body for you. Now, speaking of looting corpses, let's go over all the information that's available to you when you hold alt, because it's a little more than you might first suspect. If you hold alt down, you're going to be able to see a lot of information about every corpse that's on the screen. So the first thing is you'll see if a corpse is empty it'll say empty next to it you'll see a star next to the name of the enemy if you've not yet looted that corpse so if we go and we loot this one and we take everything it has now it says empty if we loot the next one but we don't take it 
you'll see it doesn't say empty next to it, but it doesn't have a star. So what that means is you've got three different types of corpse statuses and container statuses, and those are either empty, which means you've opened it up, you've looted everything, or you opened it up and there was nothing, or it has a star next to it, which means you haven't looted it yet, or it doesn't have a star, but it doesn't say empty, which means you looted it, but there's still something on that corpse. One of the things you're gonna wanna do is always hold Alt down when you're running through an area. And the main reason for this is it's really, really easy to miss items on the ground in this game. And if you hold Alt, it makes them very obvious. Like right here, boom, I tossed these boots of speeds on the ground. You can't really see them. They're sitting there, right? We hold Alt, it stands out like a sore thumb. We run, we grab them. Right. And this is all over the place. Pretty much everywhere you go, get in the habit of at least tapping alt as you turn, getting used to holding alt as you pass through an area with a lot of junk in it. Right. You'll constantly find things on the ground that you didn't realize were there if you hold alt. Also realize that holding alt does not light up everything. It's not going to light up certain chests. It's not going to light up certain vases. Right. There's going to be a lot of things that holding alt won't reveal for you. So you're still going to have to rely on like hovering over things like this skeleton corpse here is not being shown by holding alt okay this next one is one that probably everyone with a decent amount of time in the game can relate to and that is remember to save often get familiar with your quick save key it is f5 on the pc by default and you're gonna want to hit that thing constantly when you go up and you're starting an important conversation or after you loot an entire room or after you finally clear a ton of enemies right or after you get through a really long dialogue session where you talked to everyone in camp the number of times I've done one of those things that takes a substantial amount of time and then I've went and done something on accident that I didn't want to do and I needed to reload the last save only to realize oh no now I have to go through that dialogue conversation with that one NPC all over again or now I have to clear that one room again right it happens all the time and it's totally avoidable if you remember to manually quick save constantly so get familiar with your quick save button and feel free to use it often all right this next one is about strategy I think one of the big mistakes a lot of new players are going to make right when they start this game is they are going to run into battles head on. They're just going to see a group of enemies and they're going to just face tank them or they're going to try to. And you're going to quickly realize that this game sets up a lot of outnumbered situations where it's going to be your four man army against five enemies, 10 enemies, something like that. Right. And the game is expecting you to initiate these battles strategically. It's not expecting you to go in face first and tank all of those arrows to the the face you know on ground level the game is expecting you to take advantage of all of the things it's putting in place sometimes it'll be ladders that take you up to higher ground sometimes it's going to be your ability to push enemies off of ledges sometimes it's going to be your ability to sneak up and unleash a sneak attack on them before they even know you're there one that happens to me a lot is i'll finally kill a ton of enemies that i was in a battle with and then after they're all dead and i'm looting i'll notice that they were all standing on top of an explosive barrel or two that i could have just just blown up and the fight would have been over ages ago. I would have still had all my spells. I would have had my potions. So just a reminder to look around, check out your environment. This is a strategy game and the developers oftentimes plant things for you to strategically interact with, right? It's not an accident that those explosive barrels were there. The developers very much thought about it and said, hey, you know, it'd be cool if we gave them some items to help them with this battle. And that's all over the entire game. Sometimes it's explosive barrels. Sometimes it's grease. Sometimes it's obviously objects you can throw from up high down to the enemies down below. Sometimes it's being able to push enemies, right? There's always some strategic advantage that you can take advantage of. So definitely do that. It's meant to be that way. And if the game's feeling a little bit difficult early on, then it's likely either that you're not taking advantage of the strategic options in front of you the way that they're hoping you will, or maybe you kind of wandered into an area a little too early, which is entirely possible. I, on my first day, I sprinted into the game. I found a blight village and I went down and found the underdark and I was in the mage tower fighting Bernard and day one at like level two and I was like gosh this game is hard <laughs> you know later on I found out like oh I wasn't really supposed to be there yet so you know don't be afraid to change direction and go to a different place if you feel like the enemies you're fighting are hard not every place was intended for you to be at on day one or day two right some of these places are a little bit harder than others the next one I didn't notice for an embarrassingly long time is that you 
have these waypoints all over the game, right? We all know about these. We see them. You can run up to them. And when you do, you'll be given the option to teleport to one of the other waypoints. Another thing that you can do from literally anywhere in the game is you can open up the map and you can just click on the waypoint you want to go to. And you don't have to go to a waypoint to do this. If you decide at any point you want to go back to camp, you can open up the map and you can click, I want to go back to camp. You don't ever have to run to a waypoint to teleport to another waypoint. This is really obvious if you already knew it, but it's also a really easy one to miss if you didn't notice. All right, the next one is going to be about managing your inventory, which is going to be a problem for you if you're anything like me and you're looting absolutely everything you see, which you should be doing. There's a lot of reasons to do that. You're going to be looting literally anything and everything the game's going to let you. And it's going to be important to kind of divvy your loot up among your characters. Now, of course, you can just move items from one character to the next to kind of balance their inventory weights, right? If you don't know, if you get up to encumbered, it's going to slow your speed by half. And if you get into heavily encumbered, it's going to slow you down to a quarter of your normal move speed. So you don't want to be encumbered and you definitely don't want to be heavily encumbered. It's a real pain. So besides just kind of balancing your inventory, one real big way to fix your inventory is to simply take the things that you don't need to be carrying on you, particularly camping supplies. You're going to pick up a lot of these camping supplies like this Cholton fire swell, right? This weighs a lot, right? This has a carry weight of three, which is actually pretty substantial. There's not a lot of stuff that weighs three. We can carry entire weapons that weigh that much here. You know, we've got this weapon that's 5.4. This bow is only 2.2 and this little bottle is three. So some of these items can really accrue weight in your inventory really fast. This bottle's four. And one of the things you can do when you get a stack of bottles that really starts to weigh a lot like this is you can just right click on them and then you can send it to your camp. And that's going to take the weight off of you here. Now, since you don't ever need them, unless you're in camp, you're really not losing anything by moving those things to camp, right? Because when you're in camp is when you're going to need those camping supplies, not while you're out here on the battlefield, because at any time you can just open up your map, like we said, and you can just click on the camp and it'll take you there. Which brings us to the next point, camping. I way, way, way underutilize my camping materials. Like I have thousands of camping materials. I'm not talking like 1000. I mean like 2000 and beyond camping materials I have on me right now. And it only costs 40 of those camping supplies to camp, right? And I've been camping a good bit, but I was at the very beginning way under camping. Like I could have been camping so much more, which would have made the game so much easier. I was running around using only cantrips because I was trying to save my spells for the perfect moment. I wasn't, I didn't have any potions, right? I was running on empty and running on fumes the whole time. And for no real reason at all, the game's giving me way more camping supplies. So I think the game definitely wants you to use the camping supplies. It wants you to have decent access to your spells. So, you know, don't be too stingy with those supplies. Definitely make sure you have some on hand for when you need them, but feel free to camp fairly often. Also, you know, of course, going to camp is good because you're going to be able to continue your relationships with all of your companions while you're in your camp, which is very important. You want to be talking to all of these people every time you come back. Try to talk to all of them. Make sure they don't have any new dialogue options. Some of the best stories and some of the best quests in this game come from progressing your relationships with all of your companions in camp. So stay on top of that. It's going to be worth it. The next one I'm going to recommend is being sure that you're taking advantage of a skill called guidance in the game. Now, there's a couple of ways to get guidance in your group, one of which is to just have Shadowheart and she has guidance as a cantrip. And now the important thing is that it's a cantrip, which means you can use guidance every time it's given to you as an option in your dice roll check. It'll roll the dice. It'll say, do you want to do a bonus action? You say yes. And then you choose guidance and you can choose this every time. And what it's going to do is it's going to add one to four to your dice roll. So if you roll a 15, it could increase that 15 to a 19. And you can use this infinitely because it is a cantrip. So another way to get guidance that you can use on important roles is to teleport to the Emerald Grove environments waypoint right here is the town, but you're going to pass the gate that you normally go in to get into the town. You're just going to go west and you're going to follow the path. And right here, you'll be able to jump up this ledge. You'll come up here and you'll keep on coming up up this ladder in the back. And then right here is going to be a skeleton on the skeleton. There will be a necklace and on this necklace guidance cantrip. You can use this unlimited with no cooldown because it is a cantrip. 
and it only costs one action. So it's perfect in dialogue checks and stuff like that. The next one that's really nice to know and to take advantage of is when you're walking around, one of the things that's important to any battle is making sure that you see the enemy before they see you. This can really change the pace and the outcome because you'll get a sneak attack, which does a ton of damage, or you'll get first hit and you'll surprise them by coming out of stealth with your attack, right? A lot of advantages to being the first mover in battle. And this means you have to see them before they see you. So one way to help locate enemies is to press tilde on the keyboard and when you do this they'll light up red so even though that enemy is behind this stone column right there if we press tilde uh, we see him and it just makes it a lot easier to find them and any other enemies that might be nearby it'll highlight your party but it will also highlight the enemies even if they're behind walls or inside of structures so definitely take advantage of that one another thing to be aware of is that failing a dice roll can sometimes be more beneficial than actually succeeding on a dice roll especially in dialogue checks this can sometimes open up new dialogue options or new scenarios with new rewards and sometimes better rewards don't assume that just because you didn't get the exact exact role that you wanted every part of the way through the conversation that you've got the bad ending. Like I mentioned that it could be the exact opposite. It could be that you just unlocked the good ending to that little quest because you failed that dice roll. So trust the dice as the developers say. So another thing to be aware of is that you'll notice right there under the enemy health bar, it says threatened with a little symbol next to it. When you see that, that means that any ranged attacks that you try to use against that enemy or any enemy are going to have much lower accuracy rating you're much more likely to miss when your character is threatened. Why? Because anytime you are near an enemy, anytime you have close proximity to an enemy, you get the threatened debuff, which says that all of your ranged attacks are going to be less accurate. So always try to create some space between you and the enemy before firing ranged abilities off. If you're on like a spellcaster or an archer or something like that, make sure to get some space and then fire abilities. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot of misses come up. And and if you're melee, that's fine. Then you can go ahead and use your melee attack on them. Another piece of advice is to always use your actions. After you've got an action, you've always got a bonus action. And sometimes it can be real easy to miss one or the other. In the heat of the moment, you might think, oh man, well, I don't want to attack. So I'm just going to move my character over here. Well, if you're going to move your character without attacking, then use your dash. That costs an action and it lets you move twice as far. There's always a reason to use an action or a bonus action. Well, bonus action, not always. Sometimes there's not really an applicable bonus action that's going to be available to you, especially in the early game, because you haven't unlocked all of the things or you don't have gear giving you those bonus actions that you're going to be able to take advantage of later. But certainly when it comes to actions, almost always there's something you can do. Another thing that you can and should do is examine your enemies, especially if it's one that looks like it's going to be tough. When you examine an enemy, it's going to tell you its strengths, its weaknesses, all kinds of stuff. So here we can see that it's got slashing resistance and it's weak to bludgeoning. So if I use bludgeoning weapons on this guy, he's going to take much more damage from those. So that's like maces and clubs and things like that are going to hurt it a lot more. It says bludgeoning damage against this enemy is doubled, whereas slashing is halved. It'll also tell you some notable features that it has in case you want want to know those things, but it's really useful to know their resistances, what they're strong against, what they're weak against, especially like if you're casting spells or, you know, wondering what to use against the enemy. Similarly, if you're wandering around the world and you hover over a door or a wall or something on the floor and it says examine when you hover over it, that is almost certainly something that you can destroy by attacking it. So if you see something you can examine door, floor or wall, attack it to break it down. Another thing you can do if you see a mine and you don't have a diffuse kit is you can throw something at it to set it off. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll throw the skull at it here and that's going to disarm the mine for you if you don't want to bother walking around it. The next recommendation is make sure you're using those short rests. You get two per day and they're going to give your group half of their health back when you use them. So no matter how much they're missing, they're going to get 50% of their health back when they use this. So he's got 32 health, so he'll get 16 back. There he is. Now he's got 17 health out of 32. If we did it again, he'd go to full. Another thing that you can notice is that the NPCs that you sell to the merchants, they have this little attitude bar down here and you might have been wondering what that is. Well, if you get the attitude higher, they're going to pay you a lot more for the goods that you sell to them. The way to get it higher is to actually donate either gold or goods to them. So if you sell everything to them and then you find out that they don't have any more money, 
then you know you can donate to them afterwards if you'd like to to get that attitude into the green here alternatively if you steal from them or you get caught stealing from them it's going to bring it down here into the lower area and they're going to offer less for the sales that they make with you for science here we'll go ahead and give this npc a bunch of stuff for free so we can see that bar move real quick just give them all this items and we'll say hey there you go buddy take that right now he's sitting right there and look boom now his attitude is in the green so when i sell things to him he's going to offer a lot more to me in return the next one is take your time with the story don't rush the main story quests a lot of things in this game can be skipped or missed if you just keep barreling forward on the main story path, you know, there's certain characters that will disappear or they'll move on to other places. And sometimes they'll pop up again later in the game and sometimes you'll miss it entirely. So feel free to take your time with this game. Try to talk to all of the NPCs. Try to knock out all of those side quests before you push the main story too far. And try to wrap up the loose ends in Act 1 before you head into Act 2. Because by doing that, you're going to push some of those stories into act two you're going to move your relationship along so that they're different when you get to act two another really useful thing to know is that sometimes you'll come up to one of these chests and let's say you don't have any lock picks especially early on before you'd have accrued a nice stockpile of them you know you might run into a chest but not be able to open it what you can do is just right click on it and pick it up and if you do this now you can carry it with you it does weigh a lot so you won't want to grab too many of these and just carry them around you'll want to take care of that at some point but at least now you know it's in your inventory you can open it up whenever you're ready you can just kind of plump it down and open it up the next thing we're going to talk about is this action bar up here that basically tells you the order of operations so this character is attacking first that's mine then this character is going to attack second then this one third then this one fourth, right? And so on. So it's telling you what order the enemy is going to attack in. So if you're wondering who you should kill first, well, in this case, if I could, I'd probably want to start with the Raider Zastri here and kill her before she got to attack me. And then he gets to go, she gets to go, and we can try to kill him before he gets to attack, right? And so you can kind of try to kill people before they get their turn at attacking you. Another thing this is great for is, let's say we're like, wait, but where is, you know, maybe the camera's over here and we're like, wait, where's this character? You can click on it and it shows you where they are. Sometimes Sometimes there will be one up here in the rafters that you don't see or something like that. And you can find them just by clicking on their image here on the top. It'll take you right to them. So really handy thing to take advantage of. So don't miss out on that. Likewise, you can use your bars over here if you need to cast a spell on your characters. Sometimes they're muddied up. They're like surrounded by enemies. It can be hard to hit them with a heal or it can be hard to hit them with a buff that you're trying to cast. And if you're not careful, you'll cast your ability on the wrong person. So, you know, it's never a bad idea to like click the spell, whatever it is, you know, and then click on the person you're trying to cast it on over here on the left. All right, guys, those are the biggest things I wish I knew sooner. These are the things that would have saved me a lot of headache and a lot of hassle. If I had known that I could do these things, I would have caught a lot more items on my first pass. I wouldn't have had to leave so many things behind. I would have never failed to dig up a treasure chest. All of these things, I would have known which bodies had and hadn't been looted. So I hope you found something you didn't know on this list, something that helps you get through the game just a little bit easier. Hopefully this makes the game a little bit more fun for you. If you have something that you think is really useful, leave it down in the comments below you know add a penny take a penny kind of situation or the people that watch the video after you thanks for watching if you enjoyed it please be sure to give it a like and a subscribe and a massive shout out to the members of this channel to become a member of this channel and have your name displayed at the end of the videos or to see behind the scenes footage or have access to a private discord channel and more click the join button down below if you ever want to catch me live i'm on twitch at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost and if you're not sure what to do next maybe watch one of the videos popping up on screen right now.